Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I got one of those stories sent to me by everybody. And uh, Kat, K-A-T, said, hey, Steve, I'm going to send you a story. Never have before. I have no idea if you'll get this or not. Well, I got it. Thank you very much. But this is the kind of thing that makes all attorneys look bad, despite the fact that this is simply one attorney doing something kind of stupid. And I got to tap dance around this, although there was a worse story, <laughs> which I don't know if I can get to or not, that I've had to tap dance around even more. But Ohio attorney suspended after pooping in Pringles can and throwing it in parking lot. And now his explanation for this still doesn't make any sense. And of course, your imagination does make you wonder what's going on here. But he's been suspended as an attorney because he did this. The attorney said that he did this as a prank. And he said that he did it about 10 times a year to blow off steam. Now, as you know... When you want to blow off steam, you go, hey, I've got an empty Pringles can around here. <laughs> Carly Welch wrote this for the uh, Messenger.com. A criminal defense attorney in Ohio was suspended after it was revealed he defecated in a Pringles potato chip can and threw it into the parking lot of a crime victim advocacy center. And now many people are wondering if he's got some kind of beef with them as to why he would do that. But according to the Cincinnati Inquirer, the Ohio Supreme Court suspended him for a year. And they stayed six months of it because they deemed his behavior made him unfit to practice law. Of course, when his time runs out on that, he can go back and practice, but maybe he'll think about what he does for fun here. He defended his egregious actions by saying no one was targeted. And he had a habit of doing this in a Pringles can and randomly flinging it from his car something he said he did as a prank at least 10 times a year to blow off steam. I am curious to know if the Supreme Court actually gave him credit for admitting he'd done it more often. So they got him on one. And he says, well, I actually do it 10 times a year, but I'll stop. And the fact that he narked himself out on the other nine uh, does make you wonder. The court was not amused by his prank. They contended that the prank was targeted at the Haven of Hope Advocacy Center in Cambridge. According to the Inquirer, the attorney knew the advocates at the center. He'd known them for years. He was scheduled to see them in court just 15 minutes after he threw the Pringles can into the parking lot. He was reportedly representing someone accused in a capital murder case at the time of the incident, which took place back in November of 21. So this actually happened two years ago. It's just taken that long to wind its way through the grievance system. The executive director of the center witnessed the man throw the can from his vehicle into the parking lot, and it landed near her car. Now, here's the thing. Someone drives by and throws something and then takes off. You have to worry about what they just threw. Do you have to run for cover? Do you have to call the, you know, some squad out there to examine it? So, the man's been an attorney since 1976. 1976. Now, you could do the math on this, on how many years that is. And if he's done this 10 times a year since then, um, I suspect that whole area. (laughs) Uh, If you come upon a Pringles can, do not open it up. Trust me. Trust me. He's had no prior disciplinary actions against him. He also pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of disorderly conduct and littering. He paid a fine and court costs. And one thing you need to know, and by the way, I literally just two days ago uh, renewed my license with the State Bar of Michigan, and you can do that online now. So you go online, you go into their portal, you sign in, do all that stuff, and you, you have to answer a bunch of questions, despite the fact I've been practicing law now here for 32 years. And one of the questions they ask you is, have you been convicted of a misdemeanor, felony, or any other you know, criminal action uh, since the last time we asked you this question. And so that if something had happened and I'd been charged with you know, disorderly conduct and littering, I'd have to have said yes. So the interesting thing is they ask, and they'll find out. And if, if you don't tell them, then that's another thing that the grievance people will get you for. So he paid a fine and court costs with respect to those charges, Doesn't look like he put up a fight on it, though. The evidence in this case, this is the court writing, shows that despite social standards of cleanliness and decorum, the attorney failed to control his own bizarre impulses 
to place feces-filled cans out in public for unsuspecting people to find. His aberrant conduct has adversely reflected on his own fitness to practice law and brought discredit to the profession through significant media attention, the court said. And again, the Supreme Court of your state describes your bizarre impulses and says that your bizarre impulses make you unfit to practice law on some level, and they suspend you for a year. They didn't suspend him permanently. And it's, it's literally a year with six, six months being you know, held back. But to have it described as bizarre impulses and aberrant conduct, um, that's not good. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't imagine. And I've mentioned before that as a member of the Michigan State Bar, I get a, a, a magazine called the Michigan Bar Journal, and they mail it to me, and I get it every month. It's a high-gloss magazine. You flip through it. And there's a couple of things you, you look for. And one of them I've mentioned before is the front. It lists in memoriam attorneys who've passed away recently. And you always flip through there to make sure that there's none of your friends in there. Uh, and if there are, you make a note of it and to see if you're in there because you shouldn't be. And then you go to the back. And there's a section in the back on um, discipline. Discipline. And in the back are all the attorneys who've been disciplined um, in the last month. And what discipline was handed down, what they did, who they are, and so on. And you read these disciplinary actions, and quite a few of them are literally drunk driving. The number of attorneys, unfortunately, who get busted for drunk driving, and that's something you'll get in trouble for. You'll get suspended um, if you get arrested and convicted of drunk driving. But also, there's a whole bunch of them in there where it'll be somebody took a bunch of money from a client, and they're supposed to do something, and they didn't do it. And if you read these stories, a couple patterns start to emerge, and quite often it's attorneys who are overworked and having a hard time keeping their head above water and are taking on more work because they need the money, but that, of course, is just sinking them even faster. And that's the other one you see all the time. But the bulk of them are run-of-the-mill, meaning that you could just take the names and swap them around, and it's the same. Same thing, month in, month out. Same thing, month in, month out. Until you hit the guy with the Pringles can. Then you're like, oh my. Now, he's not in Michigan, he's in Ohio. (laughs) I assure you, in any state to have done that, you as an attorney would, in fact, get suspended. And here is an example of, yes, what he did broke the law. And it got classified as littering. Littering. They said, okay, littering and uh, disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct. Generally speaking, if you were caught littering as an attorney, I don't know you'd get suspended. They might give you a warning and say, hey, as an attorney, you shouldn't be out littering. Disorderly conduct, though, they're going to ask, what'd you do? What'd you do? And dis- disorderly conduct is often just somebody who's misbehaving in public to the point where somebody has to call law enforcement. There's some guy out here screaming and yelling and running around in circles, and, and we're trying to conduct business, you know, that kind of thing. But here, this is just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. And the Supreme Court pointed this out, that what it does, it makes him look bizarre, as they said, but it brings discredit to the profession. So here I am as an attorney, 32 years, trying really, really hard to do my best to represent people. And when I speak to people who aren't my clients, such as an audience on YouTube, I try to be a good representative of the legal profession. And I get notes from people who say, Steve, I watch your videos and I want to send you a note and say, you know something? You don't come across like the typical attorneys that I imagine. And it's usually meant as a good thing. I get a note once a week from somebody who goes, Steve, you're a likable attorney. And I never knew such a thing existed. And that's good. That's good. I, if, if I'm helping the legal profession have a more friendly face, so to speak, that's good. That's good, right? So here's a guy. <laughs> I'd be scared, and I did not do this. I'd be scared to look up on Google right now Pringles attorney and see how many hits this guy gets. 
And he's, he has, he has, he's brought discredit, discredit to the profession. And he's been practicing since 1976. So it's one of the strangest stories I've encountered yet on doing these shows on YouTube. And I, 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 I it is what it is. <laughs> and I hate that saying. So from the messenger.com, Kat and a lot of other people sent it. Thanks a lot. Carly Welch wrote it. Ohio attorney suspended after pooping in a Pringles can and throwing it into a parking lot. <laughs> Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. By and large, language is a tool for concealing the truth.